Hi, how, howdy. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. For me, it is lunchtime. Uh, 12 o'clock, past 12. And uh, I have passed Port Augusta and I'm on my way to Cuba Bidi. It's 500 k's and I am not sure if I'm going to make Cuba Bidi. I'm going to make this decision in about a couple of hours when I am whatever that place is called. Um, I think put them up right. Bimba or Glen Dabo, Glen Dabo, and that's sort of a couple of hours away. And by then I know how I feel because between that place and Cuba Bidi, there's not much in between. So I, I need to make a decision if I sleep there or if I push on. I have um, been feeling a little bit off the last few days physically. And when I'm physically not well, it's amazing when you watch your mind how easy it is to um, create stories and you focus so much more on yourself than on other things. And, and I could watch myself um, becoming rather fearful about the unknown and um, what's out there and and I sort of didn't want to leave that place where I was because I, I sort of felt looked after and uh, and somebody else made me food and it was interesting to sort of watch that uh, about myself and learn that and I and I thought it's a bit like um you know, when we, we go back into this, and I'm wondering if religion is like that. You, if you believe in something other, you know, like uh, people call God Father, it's, it's like you are after this, this mom or this dad and who looks after you, and we all sort of like uh, long for that at times. And, and then when you have a, a companion next to you then that's okay because that sort of fulfills that role but if you are traveling by yourself and you are at all times responsible for all the decisions you make and choices you make and and uh, experiences you have um, you kind of like it's you and yourself and and I sort of watched myself being becoming fearful. And once I noticed that, and the minute I got into the truck this morning and started driving, it sort of fell away again, that fear of the unknown. Now I'm just driving, I'm taking the next step, the next steps, I'm up the road and We'll see where I end up today. And I do what I need to do. And as my dear husband uh, reminded me, it's um, one step at a time. It's very much my motto and, I'm, and I do know that the first thousand steps start with the first step. So you just got to take one. I learned a lot in those few days. I've been um, at the olive farm. I've learned about virgin oil and and how what the difference is between the oils at the supermarket and how 0.1% pure oil is the best and you can't get any better. And on the supermarket shelf, you certainly don't find those because they don't need to number it. They just need to say, you know, less than 8%. And I learned 
that uh, one can plant 40,000 trees by hand with the help of other people. I learned that um, what else did I learn? I was thinking yesterday there were so many things I learned and now I can't remember them. I went to an auction yesterday, a country auction, and people just, it amazes me how people buy everything. I mean, there was chunk there, but it got sold in auctions for very little money, dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, seven dollars. But I I've reflected on it and I was wondering why do people pay for this or buy it all? And I think it has got to do with the country community that Number one, most in the country have places to store and hoard a lot of stuff. And that stuff comes in handy because when you need to fix things or improvise things or you, you take parts for even from broken things and you fix something else. Where some, a concept like this would never work in Melbourne because people haven't got the storage one and two, I guess... I would wonder how many people would have the skills these days to to make things from nothing or improvise or be happy with improvising because we live in this perfect world. Being out here in the country, it certainly um, touches my roots and my blueprint and it calms me no end. Um, no end and I can feel it is like parsum or palm or whatever that is called for the soul as my mother used to say the stillness the horizon the noises of nature and to watch nature how the weather comes in and how how the trees are battered on one side and and uh, kind of living with the, the sun rise and the sunset because there's not much to do for me after sunset in a truck you know you do a bit of your work and in order to save batteries you turn off the light and you sleep and you get up with the light it's a um, it's a good way of life very good way of life which is very hard to live when you live in the city I notice that each time I come back so I will be in Alice Springs on the weekend and um, running a class there and I leave you for now because I can't think of much more and the countryside hasn't much changed, but as I'm going to go into different terrain, I shall share it with you. Have a good day. I am having one. Bye for now.